Hello and welcome to a new type of video. This time I'm going to try and retrofit or upgrade an ancient device like this Brother LW35 here. An old electronic typewriter and I'm going to try and make it a modern computer. In the sense of we are going to be still using that display, the original keyboard. And I'm going to try to get the printer working as well. And then put maybe a Raspberry Pi in there and just yeah, get a modern system running in this thing. You can still get the colored uh, ink tapes for this machine, so it's gonna be a fun project. This thing is actually kind of impressive. Um, considering that a lot of the stuff is done mechanically, um, you're gonna see a lot of it later on, but for example, how they're aligning this wheel, they, they need to, um, for the front wheel, they need an absolute position, obviously, but they do not have any sensor in there. Um, to detect the position it's just the wheel is just it has this little notch here which locks into one of the places on this um, on, on the main wheel um, so if you insert this and you uh, turn the wheel here for a bit the moment it just turns but eventually it'll it eventually would stop and then latch into this one point where the notch is um, however when starting up the machine we still like I just turned it we do not know in which position um, the actual characters are so what they did is when starting it up the machine this ca whole carriage moves to the far left where this little metal plug here pushes in and pushes a little plastic lever which in turn locks this main wheel here um, so that it doesn't go um, to it doesn't lock it in one position but it uh, prevents it from going over one so if we now continue to turn left eventually and that's now reached we cannot turn it any farther so that's how it actually aligns it to um, to a known character okay after a day of work I managed to get the display running I was quite um, it was quite difficult actually I didn't expect that um, especially because I went wrong right at the start I expected this thing to have a controller built on but no the, it only has the LCD drivers on board so I have to build my own controller for now it's just running on this little 80 mega board here in the end I'll have to go to an FPGA or something I'll probably use one of these boards if they have enough memory um, we'll see but that's something for tomorrow but yeah for now here works simple code blinking one half of the LCD um, but even that is like really getting to the edge of what the 80 mega is capable of it's just not fast enough it might it probably won't even have enough enough ram so yeah but that's some progress here we go this time it's being driven by an FPGA now the timings are a lot better and it's a lot easier I got lucky the tiny XO board I built has exactly the amount of RAM that I need as display memory for this one. It is kind of a pain to use though, because we need to use it at, at a width of 9 bits. I cannot just use 8 or 4, which would be ideal for this display. Um, but yeah, I'll get it to work somehow. It's gonna be a bit of logic, but it's fine. But yeah. Now it's working, driven by the FPGA. Um, just, just, I just. Um, so far, it's only the. So far, it's only the driver code. I now need to implement the actual memory and interface to some controllers, uh, to some, yeah, to some logic controllers. I'll probably opt for SPI here. SPI is available on the Orange Pi, so I can just um, drive this display over SPI. Then I need to write the. Um, Linux driver for it should be should be fine. Um, yeah, and then the next step will be probably to get the keyboard working because I'm waiting for some parts for the for the printer assembly. So, yep. Okay. Okay, I just modified the FPGA logic to simply draw a square, and after solving one more bug, you can see I can nicely control every pixel and the alignment is alright. So, yeah, on to the interface part.
So I just finished the um, renderer code so that I can load data from RAM. And as you can see, it works perfectly fine. Currently, it's only displaying a static image that is pre-programmed into the FPGA. Um, but yeah, you can see it works. Um, we have the full memory available, so the full 8K. And it's fast enough, so yeah. Resource usage is also pretty good, so I'm gonna go with this. So eventually it'll all go into, onto a breadboard, but I'll wait until I get the keyboard and printer working with the uh, proper assembly. Until then, it's gonna stay on the breadboard. But yeah, so next up will be the PC interface or SPI interface, whatever. I have been fairly busy with work over the past few days, so I haven't made much progress, but here's a bit of the things that I got running up until now. First thing you'll notice, it's quite dark, but the screen is very legible still. That's because I figured out how to power the backlight. Well, nothing special, just um, 8 volts into these two lines, EL inverted and everything is integrated, so that was easy. And also, right now I'm streaming these pictures uh, from this rasp uh, from this orange Pi computer over here. Let me turn on the light so you can see a bit better. But yeah, it's being streamed over SPI to this little FPGA down there, which blinks each time it currently upsets a frame. Later, this will of course be done at 60 FPS. Right now, it's just updating each time the screen updates. But as you can see, it works beautifully. Yeah, so that's what I can do right now. So next step will be to write the Linux driver hardware and like interface and stuff is pretty much done now. So after a couple of hours of learning how to write Linux drivers, I got the VGA driver, or not VGA, but the display driver up and running. It's a simple frame buffer device driver. Um, as you can see, over here is the FPGA board. Blink of the green LED means we just received one valid SPI command, which means this thing is updating. Uh, it's flashing each, each time the screen needs to be updated. And of course, right now it's constantly flashing because as you can see, there's a cursor, which is constantly blinking. Um, if, I go for, if I go ahead and, for example, um, open another program, like HTOP here, you can see the, frame, uh, the refresh rate drops to the one second that HTOP uh, uses to refresh the screen. So, here we go. Right now I got to use this USB keyboard up here because I have not yet implemented that one, but you can see um, it nicely works. And of course each time I push the button the refresh gets uh, faster as well. So if I hold down, you can see it'll constantly refresh. Um, yeah, so so much to, uh, for the display. I think I'm pretty much done with it. Um, yep. I mean, there's probably some optimization I need to do in the code because it's currently pretty darn dirty, but for now it'll show work.